BPS families, we are so excited to share with you a read aloud of A Beach Tale by Karen Lynn Williams, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. As you listen to this text, we will stop at times to ask you to think about what is happening. After you finish listening to the story, first we will share some questions for you to think and talk about, then you will see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text. You can then share your written response with your teacher. Finally, you will see some project ideas for enrichment and ways to have fun to continue exploring the book, A Beach Tale at Home. Enjoy! Hello pre-kindergarten friends, I'm Mrs. Smith from the Office of Early Childhood Programs. Today I'll be reading to you the story, A Beach Tale, written by Karen Lynn Williams and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Before reading our story today, we're going to get our brains ready for learning through a brain smart start. Let's begin. Our first activity of our Brain Smart Start is the activity to unite. Our uniting song today will be Hello Friends. While singing, you can choose to wave however you want. You might want to wave like this, like this, with one hand, with two hands. It's totally up to you. It's your choice and how you want to wave your hands as we sing. Let's begin. Ready? Hello friends. Hello friends, hello friends, we're so glad you're here. Let's sing together one more time. Ready, begin. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, we're so glad you're here. The next activity in our Brain Smart Start is our activity to disengage stress. Today, I'm going to teach you a new breathing strategy. Our breathing strategy today is called fishing breathing. With summer right around the corner, a favorite hobby and pastime during the summer months is to go fishing. And one of the pieces of equipment that you need when you go fishing is a fishing rod. The fishing rod has a reel on it that you use to reel a fish in after you've caught it. And you use the line here to cast it out to sea. For this breathing strategy, you are going to pretend that you are holding a fishing rod. And you're gonna pretend just like this, that you have a fishing rod in your hand and you're gonna pretend right here is your reel, that you're reeling in a big, heavy fish. As you're reeling that fish in, you're gonna breathe in through your nose and into your belly, just like this, watch me. And on your exhale, you're gonna pretend you're casting your line, Ooh far out into the sea, just like that. And you're gonna breathe out just like this through your mouth. Let's practice together one time before we do our three breaths together. Ready, breathe in and exhale. Very good. Let's do our breath together three times. Here we go. In, out. In, out, in, out. Very good, you did it, way to go. And now you have a new breathing strategy in your toolbox. For next time you might need a deep breath to help your body feel calm inside. The next component of our Brain Smart Start is our activity to connect. Our connecting activity today is going to be to the song of Row, Row Your Boat. But to do this connection activity, it would be helpful if you had a partner with you. My partner today is going to be Mickey, but I'm going to give you a moment to find someone in your home that can be a partner with you. I'm going to count backwards from 10 and give you an opportunity to find a partner at home. Here we go. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's begin our connection activity. To do our connection activity, you want to sit near your partner just like this. And you can sit on a chair or on the floor if you like. You want to hold your partner's hands very gently just like this. And you want to look them in the eyes and give them a big smile. Now, 
as we are singing our song, Row, Row Your Boat, you and your partner are going to gently rock back and forth like you are on a rocky rowboat. And we're going to sing Row, Row Your Boat together. Ready? Let's begin. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Let's do that together one more time. Here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Way to go, you did it. Give your partner a gentle squeeze on the hands and tell them, thank you, partner. All right, the last component of our Brain Smart Start is our activity to commit to our learning. My commitment to learning today is to use my eyes to look closely at the illustrations of our story and to also use my ears to listen to the words of the story so that I will be able to identify the setting, the characters, and the events of our story today. Let's get started. The I can statement for today's pre-K read aloud is, I can identify characters, settings, and story events. This I can statement aligns to the reading literature standard for pre-K. With modeling and support, students will be able to identify characters, settings, and major events in a story. What are characters? Characters are people or animals in a story. Characters might even be a creature, like a dragon, a gingerbread cookie, or a silly monster. Can you guess who might be the characters in our story today? Let's take a look at the cover of the book to make a guess. The title of our story is A Beach Tale. Who do you see in this picture? I see a little boy. I think he might be a character in our story. I wonder what his name is. I wonder if there are any other characters in this story. Hmm, we'll have to read our story to discover what his name is and if there are any other characters in the story. Let's talk about setting. The setting of a story is the location of where a story takes place. Examples of locations where a story might take place include a forest, a city, a farm, a neighborhood, a playground. These are just a few examples of where a story setting might take place. The setting of a story can take place just about anywhere, even outer space. Can you guess where the setting of our story will be today? Let's take a look at the cover of the book to make a prediction about where the setting of our story will be. Hmm, the title of our story is a beach tale. That really gives me a clue because the word beach is in the title. But let's take a closer look at the picture on the cover of this book. What do you see? Yes, I see a boy holding a stick in the sand, and it looks like there might be some water in the background. Based on the information that we got from looking at the cover of the book, we looked at the picture, we read the title. Hmm, what do you think the setting of our story will be? If you guess the beach, you are correct. The setting for our story today is the beach. A beach is a strip of land that borders an ocean, bay, river, or lake. It often includes a sandy or rocky shoreline. Have you ever been to the beach before? Near our homes in Baltimore County, Rocky Point, Sandy Point, and Ocean City may be some beaches that you have visited before. 
I love going to the beach. It is one of my most favorite places to visit, especially in the summer. Now that we know that the setting of our story will be at the beach, let's think for a moment. What are some of the things that you might see while visiting the beach? You might see an umbrella to protect your skin from the hot sun, a beach towel to dry off after a cool swim in the water, seashells of all different shapes, sizes, textures, and colors in the sand and water. You might also see sand drawings. Sand drawings are when someone finds a sturdy stick and draws a picture or even writes letters, numbers, or words in the sand on the beach. The word sturdy means very strong. You will also definitely see waves crashing in the sand. And you will also likely see sand castles. Sand castles are fun to build at the beach. You have to watch out though, because a big wave could knock it over. You will also see lots and lots of families together having fun and enjoying a day at the beach. We have talked about what story characters and settings are, but now let's talk about what are story events. Story events are what happens during the story. Remember when we read the story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, a few weeks ago? We listened to the story and retold the events of the story in order to sequence the life cycle of caterpillar to butterfly. The events from this story included the tiny caterpillar hatching from an egg, eating and eating until he got so big and fat that he built a chrysalis. He stayed inside the chrysalis for more than two weeks, and when he emerged, he was a beautiful butterfly. Those were the story events from the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Hmm, I'm wondering what will happen during this story. We do have a few clues. As we looked at the cover of the book, we talked about the title of the story, A Beach Tale, and we looked at the picture on the cover. With this information, we know that the boy will probably be a character in the story, and the setting will be the beach. I'm curious to find out what the story events will be. One last thing before we begin reading our story, A Beach Tale, there are some vocabulary words that I would like to share with you that will help you to understand and recall story events from our read aloud today. The first word is jellyfish. The picture of the jellyfish is in the black rectangle and it looks like a purple blobby mushroom with long strands of purple spaghetti coming out of it. But those aren't spaghetti noodles. Jellyfish are sea animals with a soft jelly-like body and no bones. Those things that look like purple spaghetti are called tentacles that the jellyfish uses to sting their prey. The next word is horseshoe crab. The picture of the horseshoe crab is next to the jellyfish. Horseshoe crabs are sea creatures who have been around for more than 300 million years, making them even older than dinosaurs. They look like prehistoric crabs, but they are actually more closely related to scorpions and spiders. The horseshoe crab has a hard exoskeleton, which means that its skeleton is on the outside of its body. It has 10 legs, which it uses for walking along the sea floor. The next vocabulary word I would like to share with you is ghost crab. Ghost crabs are also known as sand crabs. Look at this cute little crab crawling in the sand. Ghost crabs are known for their two white claws in the front and are very active on the coastal beaches of the Chesapeake Bay region from spring through autumn. 
Ghost crabs dig burrows in the sand, which are deep holes where they seek shelter from the sun and hibernate during the winter. The last word I would like to share is jetty. Look at this picture of a jetty. It's the picture right here with all of the rocks along the water. A jetty is a long, narrow structure that protects the beach from the waves. Jetties are usually made of wood, earth, stone, or concrete. They stretch from the shore into the water. We have done a lot of preparation to get ready for our story, A Beach Tale. We discussed characters, setting, story events, and vocabulary that will be in our story today. Let's get ready to read A Beach Tale, written by Karen Lynn Williams and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Swish, swoosh, Gregory drew a lion in the sand. Hmm, I wonder who Gregory is. Maybe he's a character in the story. I wonder if he was the little boy that was on the front of our cover. Let's keep reading to find out. A sea lion, Dad asked. A sandy lion, Gregory said. Sandy needs a tail, said Dad. Gregory picked up his sturdy drawing stick. Don't go in the water and don't leave Sandy, Dad said. I won't, said Gregory. Dad sat down on the dolphin tail under the blue umbrella. Let's pause to look at this illustration to identify the characters and setting of our story. Who do you see in this picture? That's right, we see a little boy and his dad. Do you remember what the little boy's name was? It was Gregory. The little boy is Gregory. And Gregory is the same little boy that we saw on the cover of our book. Who is with Gregory? That's right, it is his dad. Gregory and his dad are the characters of our story. Let's talk about the setting. Where is our story taking place? That's right, it's at the beach. We can see the sandy shore meeting the ocean. Swish, swoosh, Gregory drew a tail. He did not go in the water and he did not leave Sandy. Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory came to a purple jellyfish. He made a loop around the gooey blob. So did Sandy's tail. Swish, swoosh, Gregory came to the mound of an old castle washed smooth by the waves. He went up and over and down. So did Sandy's tail. But Gregory did not go in the water and he did not leave Sandy. Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory came to a horseshoe crab. He made a big zig and then a zag around that old crab's pointer. Sandy's tail went zigzag too. Swish, swoosh, Gregory came to a giant hole. Gregory went down and up. So did Sandy's tail. Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory saw a tiny ghost crab scurry sideways into his dark round hole. Gregory went round and round the hole. Sandy's tail went round and round too. But Gregory did not go in the water and he did not leave Sandy. Swish, swoosh, Gregory wrote his nickname, G-R-E-G. -E Sandy's tail got longer. Suddenly, a wave snuck up onto the sand. It tickled Gregory's toes. Gregory jumped back and traced the lacy wave line. Sandy's tail made a wavy line too. 
But Gregory did not go in the water, and he did not leave Sandy. Swish, swoosh, Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory came to a jetty. He heard a loud roar. Gregory looked up. A giant wave crashed on the rocks. The spray splashed Gregory. He turned around to look for Dad. Uh-oh, what now? Let's take a moment to pause and talk about what's happening in our story. Gregory seems to have a problem. What is Gregory's problem? That's right, he cannot find his dad. I am sure that Gregory is feeling lost and maybe even a little scared. Do you remember where Gregory's dad said he would be? That's right, he said he would be under the blue umbrella on the dolphin towel. Do you remember the rule that Gregory's dad gave him? Gregory's dad told Gregory to stay with Sandy and do not go in the water. Take a moment to think about how Gregory can solve his problem and make a prediction of what will happen next in the story. Swish, swoosh, Gregory followed Sandy's tail. He followed the wavy line. Swish, swoosh, he traced his nickname backward. G E R G. He went around and around the deep, dark ghost crab hole. Hmm, how is Gregory solving his problem? That's right, he's following Sandy's tail. Was that your prediction? Swish, swoosh, he went down into the giant hole and up again. Zag and then zig, he went around the horseshoe crab's pointer. Uh-oh, Gregory looked down the beach. No Sandy, no dad on the dolphin towel under the blue umbrella, but... Gregory saw the mound of the old castle washed smooth by the waves. Swish, swoosh, he went up and over and down. There was Sandy's tail in a loop around the gooey purple jellyfish. Swish, swoosh, Gregory followed the loop and then he came to Sandy. Uh-oh. Hmm, what do you notice about Sandy? I noticed that too, that Sandy's body is missing. What do you think happened to Sandy? Take a look at the picture for clues. What do you see? I saw that too. I saw the wave that came up onto the shore and is going back into the ocean. It looks like a wave washed away Sandy's body. Gregory looked up. There was the blue umbrella. There was the dolphin towel. Dad waved. Sandy has a long tail, he said. How did Gregory find his dad? That's right. He followed Sandy's tail. Gregory remembered Dad's rule to stay with Sandy and not to go in the water. By following Sandy's tail, he was able to find his dad with the blue umbrella on the dolphin towel. I didn't go in the water, Gregory said, but Sandy got wet, he added. Dad held Gregory's hand. Let's get wet too. What do you think Gregory's dad meant when he said, let's get wet too. I think you're right. 
I think he meant, let's go for a swim. The end. I hope you enjoyed our read aloud of A Beach Tale by Karen Lynn Williams and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Next, we'll take some time to talk about our story. Let's recall our story events. What happened at the beginning of the story? In the beginning of the story, Gregory drew a lion in the sand. What happened next in the story? Yes, next Gregory drew a tail for Sandy while he explored the beach. What were some of the things that Gregory discovered while he explored the beach? While exploring, Gregory found many interesting things at the beach. He found a purple jellyfish, an old horseshoe crab, a sandcastle, a ghost crab, and a jetty. While exploring the beach, Gregory encountered a problem. Do you remember what happened next in the story? That's right, Gregory got lost while exploring the beach. He could not find his dad. How did Gregory find his way back to his dad? Gregory followed Sandy's tail back to his dad. Do you remember how the story ended? That's right, Gregory and his dad went for a swim. Now it's your turn to talk about the story with someone at home. Find someone at home that you can talk with. Now it's your turn to talk with someone at home about our story, A Beach Tale. Find someone that you can talk with. I have three things that I would like for you to talk about. First, tell someone at home where the setting of the story was. Next, tell someone who were the characters in the story. Last, if you were at the beach and had a sturdy drawing stick, what would you draw? Take a few moments to talk at home. For our Write About It activity today, draw a picture of your favorite part of the story. Write or dictate a sentence about your picture. Don't forget to add details from our story, like pictures of jellyfish, sandcastles, the jetty, or the old horseshoe crab. To continue having fun with the story, A Beach Tale, consider doing the following enrichment activities. Create rules to help keep everyone safe. During our story, Gregory's dad created a rule to help keep him safe at the beach. He told Gregory to stay near Sandy and not to go in the water. Gregory's dad also gave him a landmark to help him if he got lost. The landmark was under the blue umbrella on the Dolphin Beach Tale. 
With your family, discuss a plan should a family member ever get lost and make a list of all the things that you should do if you get lost. A fun enrichment activity to continue exploring the story of Beach Tale is to find a sturdy drawing stick at home and write your name and draw a picture in the sand or dirt outside. If you don't have access to sand or dirt, you could pour sugar, flour, or rice into a tray and use a stick or your finger to draw and write. You could even use shaving cream. A final activity to continue exploring and having fun with the story of Beach Tale at home is to create a beach picture. Collect sand or dirt and sprinkle it over glue on paper to create a beach scene. Using crayons and markers, add details to your picture, like a jellyfish, a sandcastle, an old horseshoe crab, or maybe even a jetty. If you do not have access to sand or dirt at home, you could use sugar or flour in place of sand. Have fun! We thank you so much for your engagement today, and we truly hope that you have a wonderful summer. We wish you well, we wish you well, all through the day today we